Hi again everybody and welcome to episode 7 of Talking Business here on the Pardo's Business YouTube channel. We're off to the USA today, we're going to be chatting with Wayne, so let's get stuck straight into it. Alright, hi everyone, we're going stateside again today, we've got Wayne here today. Hello Wayne, good evening from me, good afternoon to you. What's going on man, how are you doing? I'm good over here in England, you good over where you are? It's pretty, it's pretty peaceful right now, it's pretty peaceful over here, yes. Where, where are you Wayne? I'm actually in New Haven, Connecticut. It's, a, it's I'm about an hour away from New York. Okay, good. Now we're down there for our viewers there who are going, Connecticut, what's that? So <laughs> that's good. Now, like everybody says, well, where are you in relation to London? So, you know, I'm, I'm about an hour and a half up from London, north of London. So okay. now we know where we are in the important cities. Um, so what, what do you do then, Wayne? What's your, what's your kind of life over there then in uh, New Haven? Hey, man, by trade, I'm a, uh, a music teacher. Uh, uh, currently teaching 11th and 12th graders. I'm actually, I actually work at a STEM school, so they kind of have music pushed to the side. We kind of integrate like science. So I'm doing like music technology type stuff. Okay. Right? Cool. You know, media, uh, media things with the children, man. And I'm having a wonderful time. It's my third year doing it. It'll be yeah. I'll be to my fourth year starting in September. Yeah. Um, it looks like we may be still with this distance learning thing that's going on. What, what, <laughs> you know, what a world when we have um, had, but you know what? Um, it's a wake-up call for us to get to get hip to technology. All right. So for all those people that are complaining and parents complaining, you better get a computer in the house, get internet, get Wi-Fi, get what you need. Because you know, if you ever watch Back to the Future too, man, this is where I, I've been wanting this. I'm still waiting for my hoverboard. You know, that was five years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I wish it was. I'm just saying, that was like 25 years ago. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know, so. Um, yeah, man. So it's it's been a, it's been a challenge, and uh, um, but we you know we're sticking strong. We're just about finishing up over here with this uh, school year. Yeah. So a, a random question, man, but I haven't said that we would talk about it. in terms of music. Then is that a big thing in schools over there? Because over here the arts has been cut quite a bit in terms of funding. Um, and ironically, now with with distance learning, everybody's been told to go and do art and make music and stuff for their mental health. But when they get back to school, they say, "No, don't do art and music." Um, so what, what's the deal with music over there then? Is that pushed much in your schools? No, it, it, it's about the same. And that's, and that's awkward because you would think over you know, um, in, in, in your countries and things like that, European countries, you think music is huge, man. That's where the, that's where the history of music. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and that's, it's, it's, I'm, I'm fabricated to hear you say that it's being cut in, in your, in your cities and states. That, that's amazing because I thought it was just here in the United States and it's all comes down to funding. Oh, they don't need music to learn math and reading. Ah, on the contrary. And that, you know, that was the last project my kids were working on. They were doing a, a, um, they were creating documentaries on music and public school education mm -hmm. and how, you know, it, it, it helps or it enables them to do better. And then COVID hit. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, that, that was that. So, um, yeah, but no, man, it's, it's cut here too, man. And, uh, luckily I still have a job as a music teacher, you know? Yeah. Well, I hope it stays like that. I think we just opened up about another 50 interviews worth of stuff with what you said there. So let's, uh, you yeah, know, we'll come back to that. Maybe that'd be fun. Um, yeah. maybe not fun, interesting is a better word. Um, so in terms of then live sports, cause obviously over here, our live sports have stopped. I think there's, Various dates been given now. 17th of June, I think, is the next one I've heard where our Premier League uh, English football or soccer will, will kick off again behind okay. closed doors, I think. Um, yeah. I hear rumours, depending on what I read, um, about American sports and the NBA have just announced they're doing something in Orlando. Is that right? So the NBA will start, I believe, at the end of July, as yeah. far as, um, I think, July 31st, if I'm not mistaken. It could be earlier. But they they um, invited, I believe, 22 teams. Mm -hmm. to. It's like a tournament. So mm -hmm. they're going to play about eight regular season games, you know, to get back into shape. They're going to have a training camp. Then they're going to do those eight games. And then the tournament will start with the 22 teams. So um, it should be pretty wild, which is weird because the NBA will be going probably to December – Opposed to starting in October when I mean September October when it normally starts, um, but you know it doesn't matter as long as the NFL starts when it's supposed to start. That's all that. That's all that matters. You know, <laughs> I'm missing baseball right now, and 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 I'm hoping baseball kicks off. I do know here in the states they did start NASCAR, and uh, I believe the golf tournament is about to start up 
And I don't know if anything is public yet to where people can go. I think mm-hmm. I think stuff is still off limits for people, but they're still going to live coverage. I mean, coverage cover live the sport itself, yeah, exactly. the event. Yeah, because I mean, I, I hear bits and pieces about the NFL. I follow obviously 49ers, um, but you know, and I hear what California's doing. The Niners were the only team I think not allowed into their practice facility, um, yeah. and then all the talk about even field or it doesn't matter and. You know, obviously the Niners are so good that we don't need to really practice. We could just rock up in September. But, you know, by the by, um, it, what's the feel over there then in terms of live sports and the NFL? I mean, as a fan, as somebody who runs a podcast and you talk to a lot of people, are we going to have 70,000 people on opening day? Or are we going to have empty stadiums with noise pumped in? Uh, are we going to have games at all? What are you feeling? What, what's going on? I, I do believe that there will be games. So let's start there. I think that the NFL season will start when it's supposed to start. I, I will go out on a limb and say that. As far as fans in the stadiums, um, I do see the I do see things starting to open up here in the States. Um, I'm not sure I, I would I I'm not sure I would even want to go. Like I, I thought about that. Like if they did open it up to fans, would I, you know, try to uh, attend these games? And my wife and I were like, you know, she was like, Well, when you could go <laughs> and I was like, Oh, you sending me off to die, huh? So <laughs> like um and I kind of get where she's coming from, you know, you're just a bu- it, it, how can you do especially football, like football, baseball, basketball, with the seats are so close together. You can't sit six feet apart. You know what I'm saying? So I think they'll find a way to do it to where that it's that pumped in sound music. You know, as long as those guys are, are on TV and we could get them, whether we got to pay to watch them or whatnot, I think the fans will be somewhat happy to have sports, man, because we we were stuck in a house for like three months and, and, and we need something – you know, to entertain us and watching NBA, uh, the NBA channel and the NFL network and just watching replays of games and them showing the Super Bowl over and over again. Like I can't take it anymore. Yeah. So I, I need preseason. I need something to get me going. You know what I'm saying? But I do think that there will be football. I just don't think that it's ready for fans probably to like maybe when the winter hits and, and then it could kill some of these diseases. You know, we didn't have a big winter here in the States. You know, it was kind of warm. Um, so diseases happen and, and, I mean, viruses happen, excuse me, and they weren't really killed off by the cold. So maybe, maybe we'll wait around to, around to then to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely up in the air and it's, it's hard to, for, for over here, cause it really does depend on what you read for what's going to happen. Um, I did read somebody said that, um, fake crowd noise and all the fake chanting and stuff that, you know, if that distracts us enough in a video game. So when I'm watching it on TV, yeah, same thing. You know, as long as I can see, you know, uh, Garoppolo to Kittle 20 times a game, then I'm not really too fussed who's chanting. You know, I mean, I can't go anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's not like uh, not like I'm missing that much. Right, uh, because they, 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 they cut all the games and, and uh, you know, all the uh, international games. So there's no football in Europe this year. Uh, there's no football in Mexico this year. It's only going to be in the States. Um, so that's that's different, you know. It's going to be different, and it's funny you said that because some of the players were like, "Well, you know, th- this team ain't going to have problems with that fake noise because that's all they use all the time." You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Seattle? So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun, a new experience. But I did want to come back to what you said about the state of California. Yeah. Um, and I remember you, you said something about the 49ers not having a practice. You know, I'm, I'm a big 49er fan, and, and, I, and I help host um, the, the Nothing But Niners podcast with my boys Nick, Mike, and Tony. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful experience with those guys, man. Those, the, we're like a band of brothers. But it's funny that you mentioned how the 49ers, number this is what the NFL did. The NFL can't control what the states do, right? They can't control what the cities do or what the states. What they did, what they can't control, they can say, and they said this, that teams cannot go practice in other states' facilities. So the 49ers I have, to, have to go practice this as of right now because they can't get into their facility until the state opens them up. How ironic is that, that all 31 other teams, well, not 31, but, you know, the teams that are in California, you know, are able to practice, so no Rams, no Chargers, and no 49ers are probably practicing at this moment. They can't get into their facility. That's kind of funny that the NFL did that, you know, because the 49ers were probably shipped ready to go to Arizona. I think that's where they thought they were going to go. 
Yeah, Tra traveling around for an NFL team is really, you know, I say it's no big deal. There's obviously a lot of logistics to go into it, but it happens so much so regularly with so much regular people that, you know, a click of a fingers, they can be ready to rock and roll and, and go somewhere else, you know, pay the money, whatever you need to a university to, to train there. Um, right. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> fascinating. It's how they starting our, our 49ers off in the 2020 year. Yeah. Very like, like they ended it, really. <laughs> Right. I just I, I didn't even think about it till you just said what you said. I was like, wait a minute. We can't go anywhere else to practice and we can't get into our facility. Hmm. All right, NFL. Just my little state of them, see what they say. You know, I'm sure it'll be a nice little statement. So. <laughs> um, but no, that's cool, man. That's interesting. So let, let's move on to like a real um obviously COVID is still a current topic, but some of it's certainly overtaking it in the headlines is the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, I, I'm a big fan. I'm going to introduce this in terms of my perspective, um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of, of America. I've been very fortunate that my folks loved it when um, I was a kid. You know, we'd go there on holiday. We've been fortunate to see a lot of it as a tourist. Um, my folks have traveled around a bit and seen more of, I guess, real America that you're not going to see on, on you know, websites and things um we've done disney and things like that we've been very fortunate you know and i thank my parents for that and you know me and my wife honeymooned in the states um you know we we love the culture the sport the music the food the people um how did i not see this coming how, how did i just see something on tv and go oh and then all of a sudden we've, we're a couple of weeks down the line and it's still there how did i not see that coming as somebody who knows a lot about america i mean what did i miss yeah like um you know this country in its history man it, <clears throat> it has a funny way of uh of repeating itself over time and time and time again you know um you being from another country and your upbringing you know with your parents and things like that exposing you to america you probably just didn't really get the full exposure because you didn't need it like you didn't need to know that there was this race divide division and all these type of things because you guys grew up differently. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you come here, you don't necessarily see it either. I mean, depending on certain parts, you know, where you go, you know, it's, it's a, it's a free flowing country. You come in, you enjoy yourself, you know, you spend your money, you go back home broke. Right. Mm -hmm. And then underlying there, there's, there's, there's that underlying message, you know, um, and when we talk about the Black Lives Matter movement and we talk about, you know, the things that was started, you know, I'm an 80s baby. So I was born in the 80s, grew up in the 80s and the 90s. And I, I remember a lot, you know, growing up during that time. But I don't think it was I don't think I ever pictured the things that I'm seeing now in 2020. I, I don't think I ever thought we would repeat the history that I learned from the history books, you know, hmm. city, cities being burned and, 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 and innocent uh, black people being killed and, and things. Like, I, I thought that was done. I, I thought it was done because, you know, you mentioned your parents and, and, and them raising you guys, you guys, right. My mom is the same way, you know, um, it, she didn't raise me based off of color and things like that because at that time, like it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big issue here. Like you, you just go out and you love everybody and you, you have a great time and you do this and you do that. And then as I started getting older, I never understood why my mom like always, like she, she was like, she just prayed so hard for protection and things like that because there was things she probably didn't want to expose me to. But as I became of age, I started to recognize, you know, the prejudices and, and, and the systemic, uh, you know, the racism and, and things like that that was going on and i'm saying to myself you know it's not necessarily affecting me personally but it's still here and and something needs to be done and you know we when we the the, the guy the guy the jersey that you're wearing you know whew, i remember getting in I, I remember being in a in a 49ers group i won't mention the name of the group okay. and i remember being a writer for this particular group and I was writing people, you know, I was, I was gaining exposure. I was having a good time. I was writing my articles. I was pumping out stuff. I was, I was letting the people know about the 49ers and stories. And then I was the first one to break the Kaepernick story. Like I was the first one to show him, you know, sitting. If you ever watch the photo, he's so far away from the field. <laughs> like, why is anybody 
didn't even pay him any attention. That was my question. And he's had the preseason one as well, where obviously there's not much TV coverage or talk about him much anyway. It didn't really come on TV, but it was on the NFL Network that night. So to see the pre-game show, they didn't show any of that. It was just going to start when the game started. So I got the footage. I forgot where I, I forgot where I saw the footage from. I forgot who tweeted it first. And then I was saying to myself, okay, like, I get it. Like, I rocks with it. He was sitting at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I was like, I get where he's coming from. Like, I do. The group that I was writing for was ran by a bunch of, you know, military-based, you know, people that, you know, love the 49ers and things like that. And I guess I said that I, when I said that, you know, I some of you might not agree with me, but I definitely fully support Cap because the police brutalities at this moment are like through the roof. Like I done witnessed at least 20 black kids get killed. I'm talking about children. And I'm like, this is how this has to stop. And it's by police. I'm like, this has to stop. And like I I like I support it. And next thing I know I got kicked out of the group. And I couldn't figure out why. And then I hit one of the people up and it was like, you know, it's just a bunch of us are military and we 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 you know we honor, we honor that flag you know i understand where you were coming from but you know blah 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 whatever whatever so long story short got kicked out of the group and it really messed me up like i was like dang like how can i get kicked out of something that i really really truly am super passionate about but i just wanted to support this guy and then kaepernick went through all the scrutiny it was like you know not comparing him to like jesus but it was like he boy did he get lashed and pierced in the like he just took it all and just kept rocking with it like he wouldn't change his stance right he did meet with you know the former football former uh, military player he, he the guy suggested that he take a knee and that's when the knee started and then here came the nfl the the military and and black people white people and and boom division was created i was like oh god now your nfl people were saying stuff like Man, just stick to football. Leave the politics and stuff out. Don't use this system to promote, you know, your personal beliefs or things like that. And I'm like, dang, like, I don't think people realize, like, the bigger picture. I get it. I want to watch football, too. I want to watch touchdowns. I want to watch interceptions for touchdowns. I want to watch all. I want, and I want my team to win, more importantly, right? But what he decided to sacrifice his career for was bigger than football. And can I just fast forward to today? Yeah, for the NFL, for Roger Goodell, Caps public enemy number one. Now, I know you asked me this question in, in the email, and I'm going to answer this question before, before yeah. I talk. About it. Cap, Colin Kaepernick will never get an apology. <laughs> he will never get it. It's not going to happen. They're going to try to apologize to Cap in certain ways. All right, and here's what I mean. All right, you're, um, you know how it's hard for people to say I'm sorry, but they, they so they're going to try to show it, right? So think about you did something and um, you, your mom, you apologize to your mom because it's easier, but it's harder for you to say, or it's harder for your dad to say sorry or what whatnot. So your dad's just going to take you out for ice cream and, and maybe buy you a new toy and, and things like that. I think that's how the NFL is going to open up to cap. Now he is older. But his body is doesn't have the wear and tear, um, and I, I cap only fits a few systems in the NFL current today. You know, m number one Ravens, right? Because our ex coordinator is there running the same system like Lamar Jackson is running. That's what he would I, honestly fit. He'll probably fit the Bills system, but they have a quarterback, so it's it's hard for him to get a job. And I know people want to say, oh, you know, they blackballed him. They did. They absolutely did. I will never argue against that. But Cap also didn't help himself, you know, football-wise. He didn't get better. He didn't progress as a pocket presence quarterback. Now, with that doesn't mean he's bad. It's just that teams might want that, and he doesn't fit those teams. And that's that's one of the reasons why it's hard for him to find a job in the NFL. NFL. But I think of what's going on right now. I think that the now that the NFL is awake. And and I hate to say it, but the NFL is bigger than America. Like it's huge. Like it's the NFL is huge. Now that it's awakened, all right. Yeah. Now that the the commissioner, whether it, you want to believe it or not, now that the commissioner is understanding the situation, I I wouldn't be surprised if if they make everybody kneel now. Mm -hmm. Like I like I wouldn't be surprised if it's if it's 
Kneeling is, a, for me, kneeling, I was always taught that kneeling was a sign of reverence. It's paying respect. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you kneel before, you know, if you're, 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 you're a creator, you kneel before, you know, uh, you, uh, vowing, you know, will you marry me? You take a knee, you know what I'm saying? It, it, like, that's what kneeling, like kneeling is always trying to, you bow to show reverence. You knelt before kings and queens and all that type of stuff. Like, that's what kneeling is. So kneeling isn't a bad gesture. I, I never understood why kneeling for the flag was a bad gesture. But again, I'm not a mil I'm not a military person. I'm not an ex militant. But if you ask some military people, they they honor it, and some don't. That's on them. That's for them to accept, and for them to not to accept. Not us Americans. Not us. It, it's not our job to accept that or not. We just look. He's standing up for an issue. He used the platform because what's greater than football? There's nothing bigger than football, like in America, other than politics. Yeah. Like. football. Football, it's politics, football, and then I don't even know what comes third. It, education is way down on the list. So yeah. it's, it's it's really that big. So um, that's how big or that's how dominant the NFL is over every other sport. Like, it's, it's crazy, and it's the worst-paying sport too. But that's how powerful it is. And I think with, you know, with, with the, the Drew Brees situation – and now Roger Goodell coming in right behind Drew Brees. It was like a, it was like the, per you know what, Drew Brees, you messed up, but I got you. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna pick you up, <laughs> Drew. Yeah. I, I Put got him on you. His back and take him into Twitter and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, I swear that's what happened, man. And you know, I, I, I will say this: if Jerry Jones comes out and says something positive about this, then I know that the league is for real. Yeah. If Jerry Jones doesn't. This is all bull crap. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and it seems to be like, what are we now waiting for? What's next? You know, I watched that Drew Brees thing last week. And when he first came out with his initial comments, and then everybody obviously had their opinion on them. And there was the Michael Thomas video, um, you know, where he's, he's struggling to understand it. And then a day or two later, Drew Brees is then apologizing for everything. And people are saying, well, you're not apologizing enough. And then you like you say, here comes Roger. And, uh, you know, to, to say, no, he's, he's fine, he's fine. So it's fascinating to hear how important that is. Um, and, and to see that as well, I mean, our media, I, I, there was a thing on the BBC website today, and it was, the headline was, um, NFL makes U-turn over, um, uh, was it over kneeling or something? I'll, I'll send you the article, you can have a read. And it's the picture of Cap. And you read the headline, and you read the next bit, and you go, wow, they've really turned it around. And without actually watching the Roger Goodell thing, you think, oh, all, all's good. All is fine. All is well. Everything's done. Kaepernick's apologized too. He's happy. Uh, NFL's happy. Everybody in America's happy. Um, that's not an issue. Let's get back to the streets. And it's fascinating to see that kind of thing. But if you were just a casual fan in the UK, you would read that and go, oh, well, I'm glad that that's resolved. And it's not. Because, you, you know, <laughs> you've only got to watch Goodell for a couple of minutes and go, oh, is he coming? Is he going to say it? Is he going to? Oh. You know, and it gets to the end and he hasn't said it and you go, oh, but yeah. it, it's, a tri it's a tricky one for me. You know, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a middle class white guy in England. I'm wearing a cap jersey. I brought, I like my jerseys. I brought this when um, he was playing for us. I liked him as a quarterback. Um, I liked him as a person. And then all this blows up. and I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm allowed to have an opinion, surely. And people have said, oh, really? Should you be wearing that? You know, I mean, uh, you live what you do. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm still allowed to support something that's happening. I've read and watched a lot. I've seen a lot that's not mainstream media. I'm allowed to form an opinion. Oh, I don't know, you know? And now it's all, um, I was walking down the road the other day and I told my wife, and a car bibbed at me uh, <laughs> in support. And you're like, oh, so I should wear the jersey now, you know? Um, so it's fascinating to see that kind of switch between yeah, should I be allowed to or should I not? It's super weird now because I I I wear the jersey. I always wear my jersey because I, I was always a Cap fan. The moment the moment he came in his first game and ran over that team, I was like, this guy's gonna be a problem, right? So I initially got the Cap jersey, and I mean, in his rookie season, we're in the Super Bowl, right? So um, I'm saying to myself, now when I wear the jersey, like, and if I stop at a light, you know, people just be like, yo, nice jersey, the great great jersey, and that's how powerful the number seven. Yeah, is to 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 people like they they I think they understand now why he was kneeling and here's why here's why here's why if that if if the person did not record the George Floyd murder for everybody to see 
if that was not recorded, we would still be stuck as a nation here in the United States. But when everybody saw, I mean everybody, I mean white, brown, yellow, red, purple, everybody had a chance. I think that the 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 empathy that the first of all everybody was I think everybody was angry. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about white, black, I'm, everybody was angry. Yeah, I agree with that. It, it just it just opened up emotions and feelings to where, oh my gosh, did this really just happen? Like, did what if my child saw this? Like, what if like, and that's what you know oppression is and that's what it's always it always has been that it's just never ever really been you know i don't want to say televised but it's never been televised to where it's been 10 minutes long where a guy is screaming and then the guy's no longer breathing and i think that is what's setting the 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 u-turn for for a lot of different organizations people you know i think people really do believe in like this country changing. I do think they want to make some type of change, some type of input. I mean, you know, Jed, Jed York is doing it. Everybody kept saying Jed York never supported Cap. Man, they were supporting Cap from day one. It's just that Lynch and, and Kyle needed a quarterback that could be in the pocket. I keep trying to tell people that. He just didn't fit the system as a quarterback. So they, you know, they tried to trade him and that fell through. So they decided to release him so he can go ahead and, and earn, you know, bet on himself, get ready for a camp and get his contract. Then he got blackballed. But it wasn't the 49ers. But Jed York was supporting money, supporting uh, the funds then. And if you, if you, I know you got a chance to watch Kyle Shanahan's um, pressers over the past week. God, Lee, man, what a coach. Mm -hmm. I, we're, we're so lucky to have a coach like Kyle. We're so lucky to have a guy that's our age, that's seen things that we've seen, that can recollect and relate to the things from being around his dad till now. And it was just so refreshing to hear him speak about all the things that are going on. You know, it, 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 it really made my day. Yeah, and he can talk, you know, when you listen to him talk, he can talk fluently and intelligently and not off the piece of paper with some notes on him in front of him. Um, and, and that's just so obvious <laughs> you know it's i mean i know i know there are personalities and there are actors and things like that who know we're good at what they do but it has got a different feel to it you know i've watched a lot of obviously me and you we've both watched a lot of shanahan stuff over the last couple of years and you go oh he knows what he's talking about like he actually knows like you know there's no there's no pr team going don't forget to mention uh, you know and, and what about this there's none of that is there you, you can feel that coming through and that's that's why you're going back to your Jerry Jones comment. Could you imagine if Jerry Jones did a, a three or four minute speech like that with no help? It would be how, how brain breaking. Would that be? It'd change everything. <laughs> it, it would be. It would be awkward. We would we would be scared to what he's going to say. And you know, it would. Uh, yeah, it would be weird. But like I said, if he's on page, because remember, he was the only coach that said if my players kneel, they'll get cut off the team. Yeah. Like, like he, he boldly came out and said that, which is weird, you know? So I, like I said, with the, with the, with the things that are going on here in this nation, man, and you know, people are trying to, we're, we're trying to heal as one. And that's the issue. The, look, I kept, I, I, I said, and I didn't really want to tweet a lot about this type of stuff. I really like to sports, yo. I really do because this stuff makes me a little angry and upset. But yeah. I said it's 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 fascinating how America only comes together as one when we're under attack by terrorists. That's the only time we're one. That's the only time there's no color, there's no anything. And that happened one day out of my 39 years on this earth. Once, not September 11th. 2001 that's the only time it happened i and i mean there was everybody was gray yeah. you get what i'm saying like that was the color of everybody and i mean people were helping police officers firefighters um people were giving out free food like it it was a it was amazing i didn't even know that america was like that until that day i was a junior in college i believe mm -hmm. and that's when i saw america's one and then as we started to rebuild everything started to go back to his normalcy. And I'm hoping that to like, as today's the things that are going on, the things that are taking place, 
I see us coming together as one, but I'm hoping yeah. this time we stay together as one. Yeah, yeah. I hope you do, and I hope other nations do. I mean, we're having protests and things over here. Um, you know, people's voices being heard, and there's a lot of it's at those initial stages of um, all lives matter versus Black Lives Matter, and people kind of crawling out the woodwork and people crawling back into the woodwork. So it's a real tricky one over here at the moment. Um, you know, we're keeping our eyes on it. it. There's a few, there's bits and pieces of violence at rights, which then uh, protests, excuse me, which then makes the front page rather than the peaceful stuff. Um, which you know because it sells papers uh, you know, um, it is what it is um, as the saying goes but you know I think we're at the early stages here it's nice to see our country kind of stepping up into that um, and obviously you've seen it happen in other places around the world you've seen the media you've seen the crowds gathering um, I saw the shot of the Golden Gate Bridge today that was full um, Philly just just yeah in the streets um, which which is amazing to see and I guess as well I was when COVID kicked off, and me and my wife would talk about it and my parents, and we'd say, this is like a movie. It's like, not re it's not really happening. It's like a movie. We're watching some kind of movie, and any minute now, here comes Nicolas Cage or something. And, <laughs> you know, that's what we're doing. And then when this started, and, and the protest, you get three or four days in, you go, oh, yeah, it's like, well, this, this, this will die down. I don't want it to, but, yeah, this will die. And it hasn't. And you're like, oh, this is really something we're living through history. What can we do to kind of get stuck into it? Which is my last question for you, actually. Um, what advice, then, do you give to people? I know I've seen various Instagram things and uh, retweets and the same thing over and over and over again. But for my students, you know, we're 16 to 19 years old. We're in a city, you know, they're in a city students. Um, they're from all parts of the world with um, Pakistani, Bengali, Indian heritage. Somalian, Syrian, Afghanistan, all kinds of heritage, you know, and there's me, middle class white guy at the front telling them how to act and behave. Um, so, you know, what, what, what do you say to people who say, uh, yeah, all right, well, America, you just get on with it, you know? Yeah, man, um, when we're talking about kids, for me, that's, that's, where, that's where we change lives, you know, is with the children. Um, you know, for, for, for adults, it's harder to change their mindset because once they're stuck in a certain way that they've been doing for over 20, 30 plus years, it's really hard to break. It's a habit. It is really hard to break habits. Like it takes time. But the kids, we have to start with our kids. And you know what I would say? I would say history matters, right? Because like the kids need to know all types of history. There was, when I was growing up, I didn't just love American history. I love European history. Mm -hmm. Like call me crazy, but I, I loved learning about Hitler and how he became that way. Like, like the psychological. You, that, yeah. right. you get what I'm saying? Like, and, and it all started with him just being like, he, I don't know if you know, but he was a, he was a great, I, I want to say an artist, if I'm not mistaken, he, he drew really well, but he couldn't get into this big art school. They like, they didn't, they didn't, they wouldn't accept him. And I think that might have triggered him. I don't know. I, I didn't study it past that because, you know, it was crazy. But I'm just saying we need to learn all histories because everyone has a history. Um, and we need to learn where we all come from. And what I love to do with my students is I put, I, I, I start on day one. Yo, we putting our cultures out here on the table. We're going to be one big multicultural family because we all come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different places. We like different foods. We like, we have different tastes. I want to learn how y'all dance. Y'all can learn how I, like, we just put it all out there as icebreakers just so that we can feel comfortable, right? America needs to do the same thing. If I could do it in a classroom of 25 kids, then America can do it as well. But us teachers, we have to take that responsibility and can't worry about a parent saying, oh, you shouldn't have taught my student this. Uh, -uh. You know what? If the parents aren't, we see their kids for almost eight hours a day. So like we need to instill them that stuff is real. Like I understand parents want to protect their kids from what's going on on the news and things like that. But stuff is real. And if the kids are in high school, then they got, they, they got cell phones. So they getting right. all the news right then and there especially in my class kids would be like yo mr brown this is trending yo yo what they told me about covid before i knew about covid and i'm like oh, what? They, they know about everything before me like they know about I'll, I'll say something like did you see this and i go uh, yeah like three days ago you know right, so. right. <laughs> Right. And, and, and I'm like, yo, where is the Corona? So I'm, they were like, Mr. Brown, the and it was before it was called COVID. They was like, this is the coronavirus. And I'm like, man, you could get a virus from drinking beer? Like, I thought 
That's what it was, because I don't watch the news. You were one of those. <laughs> I was literally one of those, and they schooled me to it. And later on in March, because this happened, was this was like in the fall, then in March, boom, big wave hit. Like, people dying. And I'm like, oh, man, my students were on it. But, yeah, like, they are, they are aware of things that are going on, and it's our job, you know, to kind of, like, just give them all the knowledge they can soak up so that they can make their own decisions in life, you know? Um, and that's what it comes down to, man. If, if, if I always say in order to teach a child, you got to be able to reach a child. So build, rela build relationships with the kids and that will make us like, that will make build strong communities, strong relationships. That'll, that'll keep us growing strong, man. I, I really do believe in that. And that, that's my motto, man. I just build relationships and just keep it real all the time. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. It's so nice to hear a teacher say that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's refreshing. You know, I obviously haven't been with my colleagues and we speak bits and pieces and we say, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to build those relationships? I can't look them in the eye, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't pass them in the corridor and things like that. So no, it's really interesting advice. And, and I think, you know, we'll all take it to heart and, and I hope that that's the way forward that just learn about other people. And at the end of the day, who knows what we end up having in common. Um, I mean, look at us two here chatting about football and um, Black Lives Matter and teaching on a Sunday night for me and a Sunday afternoon for you after a couple of tweets. Um, what what for, a crazy world. Forever. Like, I feel like you've invited me into your life and yeah. I've known you. And we have connections based off of experiences, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's how you, that's how you connect. That's how you build a relationship. You share experiences. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we Let's keep sharing those experiences then. I mean, that's awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say cheerio. Uh, I'll pause it up and then stay on the line and we'll have a quick goodbye. But um, Wayne, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Um, no. Let's do it again sometime if you fancy it. Um, no. But no, that was, that was great. And thank you. And we'll see you later. All right, man. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Wayne, thank you so much for your honesty, your truthfulness your insight and for taking the time to speak to me today really appreciate it to everybody watching please make sure you continue this conversation with your friends your family with complete strangers if you feel safe to do so and we'll see you all again sometime thank you bye bye